Hey everyone, um, got a quick video here I wanted to show you uh, the latest update on Event Horizon. This is actually going to be the pixel control box for uh, the whole art installation. It's pretty uh, pretty big, but it's going to be able to fit inside the uh, structure underneath in the bottom. Right now I've got these LED strips plugged into each of the eight panels going around the box, as you can see here. Um, and each panel has six outputs, so that's for a total of 48 outputs uh, in each output. Uh, so far I've tested up to 400 pixels per output, fine. I think the BeagleBone can handle more. I'm not sure, um, although that's, that's just a crap ton of data, so probably not necessary to go much higher than that. So what we've got inside here, first of all, um, I figure I'll go and show you guys this. We have an Ethernet input and two IEC inputs with switches. Um, and then inside we've got uh, a ton of wires. It's a little scarier than it actually is. Each panel has its uh, own set of power and ground and then another set of power and ground which is power injection which is what you see the second uh, row down here. So basically if you have a, a roll like this you can get away with pretty much just the one plug but if you have two or three strips together or a bunch of panels uh, that's just conveniently there if you inject power at the other end. So, um, so yeah, that that ends up being a lot of wires, as you can see here. Uh, I've zip tied everything into bundles, and these uh, all funnel into these uh, ground bars. You can buy them at Home Depot. They have about eight or ten positions, sometimes more, sometimes less. And then each of those ground bars has two big eight gauge wires coming off of it to here so it's kind of a branching system so we don't have 10,000 wires coming straight to these power distribution bars uh, we just have a few here and we kind of keep these things tucked out of the way which is nice uh, so what else do we have in here now this is intended to be much more than just a pixel control box ordinarily uh, and this will be a product later that you can buy through the Enviral Design store um, but it won't feature the mini computer um, the wireless router which is right here and the switch Ethernet switch which is here um, it will pretty much just feature the beagle bone and then of course your input Ethernet cable will just pipe straight into there for data input but since this is supposed to be a um, very complex control box for a standalone art installation that can drive, you know, 20,000 LEDs. Uh, I went ahead and threw the computer in there so it could run autonomously. With the computer, you need a switch, and of course, you need the wireless router if you want to have access to it via a tablet. Um, and power strip in there is, is tied into the main power coming into the box. Uh, you can't see it. We got two fans here, but that's not what you can't see. What you can't see is the two giant power supplies um, sitting underneath this this 3D printed tray. And by the way, all these panels are all 3D printed. These beams are um, uh, made from open beam. I'm sorry, open builds, uh, not open beam. Um, they're a company that was kickstarted and they sell these awesome, super awesome kits. Um, well, it's really just a, a, lo a, lo a family of products you can buy. There's the bars, which are pretty standard. Um, all these different kind of um, hex bolts and brackets. And uh, these are actually 3D printed, but I have some of their aluminum ones in the bottom for the for the structural stability. This thing's heavy, um, but these are solid 3D printed brackets, so they're actually pretty strong too. And um, each of these panels I printed in one piece on my TAS4, um, so I got the numbers on there, and each panel's got a letter. So, uh, but yeah, in each of the underneath this tray, there's two power supplies. Uh, there's a and B, and they're both a 240 amp 5 volt power supply. So, um, and they're special, specially designed to where they can they can work together to provide uh, a common higher current output uh, without having to keep the ground separate. So the whole whole thing's on one circuit, but it's actually 480 amps of, of 5 volt power, which is a lot. It's quite a lot. Um, that has its advantages and disadvantages. It's kind of a scary number uh, in terms of <laughs> fire hazards and stuff like that, but this I took meticulous care to wire this uh, correctly by the book. Everything is, is extra high current capable, etc. Um, and of course these are good power supplies too, they auto shut off if um, there's a short or they draw too much current, etc. So yeah, that's, that's just about it. I'm going to 
print some uh, rubber gaskets to go up inside these cracks, uh, all four sides, uh, with my Olsbot Taz 4 um, Flex Extruder, which is basically a flex, uh, I'm sorry, flexible filament extruder, so stuff like Ninja Flex uh, you can print, which is kind of a rubber filament, which gives you a nice seal. Uh, I'm going to grab the lid real quick so you can see that. Uh, the lid... <clears throat> Uh, still a work in progress. <laughs> it's almost done. This is the bottom side of the lid. As you can see, we've got two open build beams with a 3D printed bracket, and there's some L brackets in here, so it's got a pretty strong, um, pretty strong structural element to it. This plastic here was not 3D printed because um, a it's just really big, and I want it to be one continuous piece. So um, how this will work is uh, it'll just flip over and fit down on this. I got this um, sheet ordered from Taps Plastic. They're out in California, but they have uh, a nice custom cut to size order um, form. It's, that's pretty reasonable in price. And of course, you can also get the holes drilled out for you, which I did. Um, now they almost match up on all the corners here, <coughs> which might be my own uh, issues with, with the bolting together of all the parts. There's a lot of parts, so maybe it was just off a little bit, but it's very close. So I'll be able to fix that just by drilling out uh, the holes a little bit more um, and lining them up. Uh, so that gasket will, will basically create a seal underneath here. And um, I'll also have um, some silicone caulking in all the um, cracks, crevices, along all the bars and panels. And uh, that will make this relatively weatherproof. Uh, I'd like to get some uh, awnings that come down from each um, each section to cover up the plugs, uh, but that can be a phase, a phase two, I think. For now, I think all the other treatments should be good. Um, I might also do, um, yeah, you know, that seal will probably be enough. I was thinking about doing maybe a small lip that kind of hangs over the edge a little bit with the lid, but who knows, may not need it. Uh, so that's, that's that. Um, hopefully we're doing some big, big projects with this box. Um, it'll just be powerhouse. Um, this will be our Pixel Box uh, 480, which is a very um, direct naming convention that relates to how many amps it drives. You may have seen pictures of our Pixel Box 60, which is going to be our smallest pixel control box. This will be our largest, and then we'll have one or two sizes in between. All of them will be very similar in construction. They'll use Andersons. Uh, they'll be um, made with open builds, beam kits, and uh, 3D printed panels. Very similar, very plug and play. That's the, the main part. And of course, it will um, it'll work directly with our software, GeoPix. And everything's Anderson based, so if you, if you buy strips from another vendor, you can just simply crimp on your own Andersons. Uh, or you can order from us, and we'll have WS2812 strip rolls with um, Andersons pre terminated, uh, just like they are here. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, takes five minutes. Pretty much just reselling strips with the um, connectors on there for convenience. And uh, anyways, that's that. And look forward for more updates with Event Horizon where I actually have this thing plugged up and running to the installation. Cool. Thanks.